Hello everyone. Today's session is about uh, accessing soft layer object storage from Windows desktop. So the first thing we are going to take a look is the object storage in um, up in soft layer control panel. The different data center and each data center may have a different um, public access URL. So to be more specific, for today's session, we're going to go into the Dallas 5, the data center that's labeled Dallas 5, and um, connect to a container there. We can set up the users to connect to a specific uh, container. And we can also set up a tenant. A tenant is kind of like a group of users more um, for a company boundary. So let's say if you have an ACME corporation, then that corporation may have 30, you know, 40, 50 users, and you can assign um, a tenant to it. So we just call the tenant tenant number 31. And let's assume that this tenant has 100 users. So we just assign 100 users and then one terabyte of storage. And then that storage will be coming from the soft layer OpenStack object storage. There are two entries. One is for Keystone, and then for soft layer object storage, it's without a Keystone. So if you want to get the access information, you can click on the View Credentials. And I got the credentials already, so I just type it in and connect, and then it found my existing container, which is test1. So now the tenant is ready. Um, you can do this on a tenant level or you can do this on a user level so you can connect individual users to individual containers. That's up to you if you want to do so. And to do it on a tenant level it's easier as you can see here. So I just use that for demonstration purpose. So now we will log in to tenant number 31 and then you can see the documents and pictures. The topics of today's session is about accessing the folders from Windows client, right? So see the folders and files from web browser client. That's not um, not a focus for for today's session, but we will go back to the browser frequently just to double check that the files has already been uploaded to the soft layer object storage. So the web browser access is more like a like a validation testing method um, to validate that the functionalities of the Windows client. So we just logged in. As you can see, the there's a system tray area icon you can click on. And then after you click on, you can see there's an M drive. Right? The drive letter could be something different, but it's a drive letter, a real um, virtual drive. Um, it's not a physical drive, right? It's not a real a hard drive sitting in the drive bay on the desktop here, but it's a virtual drive and appears pretty much the same as a hard drive. So now I just created a folder called a folder created by a Windows client. So now I'm going to deposit some files into the folder I just created and then upload. So now the four files has been uploaded. You can see it's pretty easy, right? Just drag and drop. That's your familiar Windows Explorer behavior. And then the folders show up on browser, right? So we, we're using browser to vali validate that the files and folders has been created and then the files has been uploaded. And the on the Windows client, there are also some icon overlay. Um, so now let's go back to the soft layer to do, uh, to check it out, right? So you can see the folder created by Windows client. This folder also shows up on soft layer, right? So the soft layer object storage is the backend storage we're using here. And then we're using the files and folders directly from the Windows client, the Windows desktop. And then as a matter of fact, the Windows I have is uh, Windows uh, 8.1. There's also another way of sending files and folders to uh, soft layer. As you can see here, I created a test folder from Windows local drive. You can also have a folder on the local drive, and then you can set up two-way synchronization between your 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 uh, local uh, desktop and then the soft layer object storage. And typically, this is called a uh, like a synchronization folder, or 
um, people may just refer to it as like a Dropbox kind of behavior that you have a folder and then the folder's content is synchronized with the cloud storage. So you can always right click on a local folder and say attach to your account. So you can have multiple these kind of synchronization folder. You just right click on it and then the content will be sent over to the cloud. So now we are going to create a new file uh, to test the version um, because for every attached folder to your cloud, it's under two-way synchronization. And then whenever it's under two-way synchronization, there's also a possibility of conflict and, 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 and version control. And so, so version control is very important to resolve um, the conflict if people you know changing the files um, at different times. So now we just add a new line to this text file. So now let's go back to the web browser to validate the change. And you can see now it's you know V2. And V2 has a bigger size than the V1. You can revert back to V1 if you want to. Um, so it, you know it's under version control. However, however you want to do it, that's fine. So let's say we delete the file, right? So to demonstrate the two-way synchronization, we delete the file from some other places, not from the Windows client. Um, if you wait a while, the file will, the change notification will come in and then the file will disappear. But if you don't want to wait, you can always say, you know, right click the folder and say force refresh and then the folder will um, be refreshed. And then uh, you see that uh, t that text file just disappeared. Um, under our eyes, right? So, so this is two-way synchronization. You have a local folder, and then you can uh, delete it, and then um, you can also restore it, right? So now we restore the file from the web portal, and then uh, we can wait for the change notification to come in, or we can just um, impatiently like click on the force refresh button there to force it to uh, come in. So you have to, you know, after a while. Um, the test uh, test version.txt file will show up, right? So it's showing up. So so typically the change notification will come in you know, around like a minute, two minute kind of um, time frame. So uh, for for demonstration purpose, you can wait for it. But you know, in real um, production environments, you know, you, before you get a chance to uh, see the file, it's already there, right? Before you you know walk from one machine to the other or um, so to, to, as a summary of um, what I've shown you today, so you can turn any local folder into a synchronization folder. And then you can see the files and folders on software um, object storage. You know, the normal folders, you can see them as it is. But for version folders, it's under that location because um, this is a, a gladiness way of keep the version, right? Not every cloud storage vendor supports the version uh, natively. And even if it's supported natively, you know, the, the way Amazon S3 and the way software object storage, you know, the way the way they do version is different, right? So, so we have uh, like a layer above so we can do versions for all of them. If you are interested, you can also check out the management console of the Windows client. You can see the backup. You can see the audit trays. You can see the settings. So these are just minor details you want to um, check out you know, if you want to. Thanks, everyone. Bye.